Ha! Hey everyone, Hassan here. Welcome to the world of Ha! Today I have another Nintendo Switch related video for you. And it's actually a Nintendo Switch! Uh, yeah, it, it's the, the system. I bought another Switch. You're probably like, what? why would you do that? Um, so Nintendo is releasing a Switch Lite, which is a miniature portable only version of the Switch. I'm not really planning on getting it, but what they also announced is they're taking the exact same Switch before, but they're updating the internals ever so slightly. There might be like a new chip or something, but basically the byproduct of that is this is going to have like double the battery life. So instead of like three hours of battery, you're going to get like six hours of battery life, um, which is a significant upgrade in battery life. However, everything else should theoretically be the exact same. I've seen impressions and things that people have been saying online, and it's supposed to be the exact same. People say, wait, did they fix the Joy-Con issues? No. Um, is there better performance? No. At least as of the recording of this video, the only thing that Nintendo has enabled with this new Switch is because of the new internals, there is now better battery life. Everything else, exactly the same. So should you upgrade? Depends on how much you use the Switch portably or not, right? Like, do you need the extra battery life? It's a brand new system. Like, so th it's exactly the same otherwise. Um, and I'll show you that. I'm gonna do an unboxing and a comparison. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna take my existing Nintendo Switch that I have, and I'm going to uh, transfer over uh, my stuff onto here and kind of briefly show you the process for that in case you're wondering if you are somebody like me that bought a Switch either on launch day like I did or later, um, then, you know, if you want to upgrade, you'll, you'll kind of find out the process. The first thing that I want to mention when you're looking at the box, how do you know which one you're getting, right? Because it's pretty much the exact same thing. Some retailers online may have separate listings, but just in case they don't, I want to do a comparison. On the right, this is the box the Switch has been sold in up until this point. On the left, this is the box with the revised model. It's now got a lot more red on it. So, question for you, if you are buying a Switch today, which one do you buy? The answer is pretty much always going to be the red one. There is literally zero reason to ever buy this version of the Switch now, except in the rare cases of like if you want to do like homebrew and you want like an older, older model, which not all of these are going to be, it, it gets real, real tricky with that. But in general, there is zero reason to buy this. It's the exact same price, the exact same system. So if you see both of these sitting side by side, side by side on a shelf, do not get this one, get the red box. If an employee picks up this one, tell them to put it down and pick up the red box. You want the red box, okay? We got that out of the way. So let's take a look at this red box. Um, so uh, they're they're embracing the, the red coloring with the Nintendo Switch logo. So I got the gray version. They, they released it in the same versions they had, the gray and then the red and blue, the neon. Um, I, I got the gray at launch. I'm getting the new gray. Uh, I have, the red and blue is nice, too. I have the red and blue Joy-Cons, but my, my wife got the red and blue Switch, so I figured I'll just keep it consistent. So here's the side of the packaging right here, showing you all the different ways you can play with the Switch and more ways on the side as well. And the back of the box right here showing you the, the gray Joy-Cons, just like that. You got your Nintendo logos, you got all your, your other stuff right here. Um, so basically the contents of the box, all that, all those goodies. But uh, yeah, let's, let's just kind of get this thing open. You know, enough talk, right? Like you want to see the system. You want to see what it's all about. So let's uh, slide this open here. And as soon as you do this right here, you get a plug it in, set it up, and boom, instructions right there. So um, let's just kind of jump right into what you see. So just like before with the Switch, when you open it up, um, you have your two Joy-Cons right here. So here they are. So again, people have done preliminary testing with this and they found no differences with the Joy-Cons. Maybe down the road, people may notice that there are actually some differences, but it appears that these are the exact same thing. So if you're having Joy-Con drift issues, don't expect these to have any kind of a fix. It seems to be exactly, you know, the older one. Okay, so there's that. And then of course, we have the Switch itself. So I'm gonna move this to the side real quick. And uh, before we jump into the Switch, let's actually take out um, all the other stuff that's included real quick, just so, you know, if you've never gotten a Switch before, you wanna know what's included. Here's your health and safety guidelines. Um, you do have your Joy-Con grip right here. 
Um, which, again, just like the original model, which I don't know why they didn't update it, this is not the same as the Joy-Con grip that sold separately, because the one sold separately is a little bit, got a little bit of translucent plastic, but also has the USB-C um, port so you can charge the Joy-Con grip. The one included with the Switch doesn't. I, it's so stupid, I don't understand the decision, but it is what it is. So, in case you're wondering, there you go. Joy-Cons in the Joy-Con grip. We are, uh, we're good to go. All right, so uh, you also have your Joy-Con straps right here, of course. Be careful to uh, put them on the proper way, but uh, same old stuff right here, nothing, nothing new. You got your uh, USB-C cable, so there's that. Your uh, power cable, again, same thing. Um, you also, of course, have the dock. And again, as I'll show you, it's the same thing. So if you have a Nintendo Switch dock, there you go. You know, it's all, it's, it's right here. Okay, so there it is. All right, so let's take a look at the the uh, the main event, right? Like this is this is what we're all here for, the Nintendo Switch. So pull this thing out and boom, there you go. I forgot how like clean and slick it looks without all the fingerprints on it, right? Like it's about to get like demolished. Um, but uh, here it is. Now the other question is how how is there a way to tell just from holding the Switch or looking at it? if it's the new model or not. And there actually is one slight way. So I'm gonna bring in my, my old Switch right here. Um, and what you'll notice on the old Switch, the model number, HAC001, right? So that's, that's the model number on the old Switch. On the, the new Switch, let's uh, zoom in here, HAC001, Dash zero one. So it's a, technically the same model with a slight revision. So the dash zero one means that this is the upgraded model. Um, now the other thing that I'm noticing, and maybe it's just because of my kickstand over time, maybe this is a placebo effect. This kickstand that I have on the original model was very smooth. This one feels slightly more textured. And maybe, I don't, is it just because this is worn down over time? I don't know, it slightly feels a little, slightly more textured, but is the actual kickstand, I mean, then again, maybe this is something that's in newer releases of it. I have a launch day system. Also, this one is, it's like tightly, okay, what's going on here? <laughs> like, it should not be this difficult to pop it open, right? Like, oh, there we go, huh. Interesting. Is it is it any more like sturdy? And it's got a, a nice click to it. What about this one? I mean, it's got like the same click. Although I will say the kickstand does feel pretty flimsy, but it gets it gets flimsy more the more you use it, though. You know, so it might just be the placebo effect of having a new switch. Whereas this feels a little sturdier, slightly. Eh, well, maybe maybe not. I don't know. Like up here, it's not. This material just feels slightly more textured and maybe a little different, but otherwise everything feels the same. And again, it might be a placebo effect, it might not. Um, I guess I'll find out over time as I use this more. Um, but otherwise, it should be the exact same thing. Okay. So, let's take our, uh, our Joy-Cons right here, right? And uh, plug them into the, the new Switch. And again, Two systems side by side should be completely identical, as you can see. So everything else is is the exact same. So um, here's the deal. Here's what I'm going to do. Actually, I should put it in the uh, in the dock just for the heck of it, right? Slide in the dock, and there you go. So there it is in the dock. Um, here's the deal for for what I have. I in my Switch. That's not the micro SD card. What was I trying to do? That's the Legend of Zelda. Um, I was trying to show the micro SD card that I have, um, <laughs> which technically you should turn off the switch to do, right? Should I do that? Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll just do it just to be on the safe side, right? You're supposed to turn off the switch if you're going to mess with, um, like, taking out the, the SD cards and stuff. So I'm going to transfer things over to 
um, to the other system. So the micro SD card, uh, not included with the Switch, but I have, I, I download a lot of digital games. So I have gotten a 400 gigabyte micro SD card. So if you have a large micro SD card and you want to upgrade to the new version of the Switch, you cannot just take this out, plug it in, and you're good to go. What happens is you can transfer your profiles and your save data to the new Switch. So in the settings, which I'll walk you through, you can do that. Save data is on the internal memory only. It actually cannot be saved on the micro SD card. So you can transfer save data over. Most of it's in the cloud, except for games like Pokemon and Splatoon 2 and that sort of thing, right? Um, however, if I take this micro SD card, put it in the new Switch, it's gonna ask me to reformat it and wipe out the downloaded games However, since I've transferred my account over, or I log in on the new Switch, I can re-download the games. So, there's no way if you have like 40 games downloaded and copying it over, you still, you have to re-download all the games. That, that is annoying because I have a bunch of digital games, um, but that is literally the only way uh, that it's going to work. Now, what I am actually going to do is I decided that now's the time to upgrade even further to a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. So I'm actually gonna plug that right into the new Switch, uh, which isn't gonna save me any steps. I still have to download the new games on here, but just for the heck of it, I just wanted to, to mention that. So let's get this thing open while I, you know, go through this process here and uh, grab our, our new micro SD card out of the, the packaging. So, um, you know, you'll find recommendations probably online from different people about different brands and stuff whatever I don't know I've never had issues with with SanDisk one so I've just kind of stuck with it um, since again since it's worked for me in the past that's what I use uh, and also you can get it decent prices they go on sale pretty frequently like when the switch first launched these these micro SD cards with higher capacities were quite expensive right but now they tend to be much more affordable so um, I I'm going to plug this in to the, the new switch here, which the kickstand is a little tight. There we go. So let's plug in the, the micro SD card. And all right, so we're good to go on that. So uh, here's, here's what we're gonna do. Let me actually take out the Joy-Cons because I, um, I wanna hear the click when I first, you know, turn this on and, and do it. So let's uh, let's boot this thing up. All right. So this is the new switch right here. Nintendo Switch. All right. It's asking to slide the Joy Cons. You guys ready for this? All right. There's the click. Can I turn the volume up more. All right. Ready. There you go. So satisfying. There we go. By the way, I have my bright studio lights shining at this, so don't think of, like, this is like, if you are in, like, direct sunlight, like, this is how it's probably going to be, because these are bright lights. Um, but it's still pretty readable. Um, so I'm going to go through the setup here. Let's accept the end user agreement. It's going to want to connect to the internet. So, uh... You like my Accio Wi-Fi, Harry Potter reference? Let me put in my password here real quick. Da, 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 da. All right, so connecting. Meanwhile, let me turn on the old switch and go into the settings, system settings. And under users, you have transfer your user data, okay? Um, so that's the way, the way that you're gonna transfer the profiles over. Then you have data management is how you can transfer your save data. So those are the options that you have. Unable to connect to the network. Did I enter in the password wrong? Let me try this again. Re-enter the password, okay. So give me one second while I do this properly. Okay. Connecting to the internet. Let's see if this goes through. Okay. Oh, I see some check marks. Okay. 
Uh, oh, time zones. Okay, let's see. We are down here. In the... Where, did I skip it? Is it minus something? No, no, no. It's up here, isn't it? I think I skipped it. Is it minus five? Oh, no, maybe it's minus four. New York and Toronto. Yeah, okay. Would you like to connect to a TV and play on a larger screen? I will do this later. Detach the Joy-Con controllers from the console. Okay. Let's uh, open up the kickstand here while I do that. Oh, it does say low battery on the controllers though, so um, I don't know how far I'm gonna be able to get with this. Left stick to select next, press A on the right controller. You can use it different ways, got it. Uh, transferring users and save data. So there's an option right there. Wirelessly transfer one user and all their save data to a nearby console. Um, the transferred user and save data will be deleted from the source console. Okay, perfect, I wanna move things over. Downloadable software purchased by the transferred user will no longer be playable on the original console, but can be played on the target console by downloading again from the eShop. See, about other data, screenshots and videos taken cannot be transferred. So, keep that in mind, screenshots and videos, you can probably move them over to your computer and save them there, but they cannot be transferred. So, that's the one thing to keep in mind. So, uh, system updates required, so let's do the system update. Uh, I'm going to reconnect the Joy-Cons, update now, um, so that they can, you know, keep charging. Alright, so this is going to be updating, and uh, we'll let it go through, and then I'll, oh, update complete. Wow, that was quick. The console, I was about to say I'll stop the video and come back, but the update is already complete. So, <laughs> let's just, let's just keep going right here. Uh, I assume this is going to guide me through the transferring user process, um, which is, which is pretty handy. So, let's, uh, let's keep at it. Here. So, okay, a user will be added to the console next. So I want to import user data from another console. Okay. Do you still have the console with the user you want to import? Yes. Will you keep using the previous console in addition to this one? Um, no, I'm basically going to wipe it clean. Uh, so I'm going to say no. Um... Yeah, I'm just going to say no. Because basically, you can actually authorize multiple switches uh, and and play your games, your downloaded games, on multiple switches. There are some restrictions, that sort of thing. But, um, yeah, but I just I want to move it all the way over to the new switch. So, uh, all right, let's hit transfer. The console will connect to the internet to check whether a system update is required. All right. Unable to connect to the internet. Um, I, let's try again. I set the, the internet on, on the new switch. Uh, it says it's registered, so let's hit that one. Let's connect to this network. And okay, there we go. Now it connected. Please connect the AC adapter. Oh, maybe that's what's going on. It needs to be charged. So let's get our um, AC adapter out of here. And I'm going to get this thing plugged in. All right, let me... Uh, Plug this in down at the bottom, and all right, let me plug this in, I'll be right back. All right, so I got it plugged into an AC adapter, so now it's asking me to sign into the Nintendo account for the user that will be transferred. So, let me get signed in on here. Oops, sorry. Uh, okay, trying to remember which account was what. I have a couple different accounts, because I have a European account, a Japanese account to connect to those eShops. So I am going to sign in real quick. Give me a second. Put in my username and my password here. All right, I just signed in via Twitter, but whatever accounts you have connected, Hassan, there we go. Hassan will be transferred to this console. Please ready the console from which Hassan will be transferred. It is, it is ready. Um, okay, so continue the preparations on this other console. You can go to system settings, users, transfer your user data. So that's what, I, oops, that's what I was just uh, saying here. So in your, in the other switch, system settings, users, transfer your user data. Next, next. 
Uh, oh, I set up parental controls because there's an app that tracks your like usage, kind of like an activity log, which I love the activity log, so I had to uh, um, to set that up. So give me a second here. Uh, let's see. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I need AC adapter for this one. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I guess you need to make sure that both of your switches are powered. So keep that in mind if you are trying to do a system transfer. So let me go grab another AC adapter from the old switch. All right, so luckily I actually have an extra AC adapter that I bought previously, so I don't have to uh, take it out of the dock or anything. So this one's now plugged in, even though it was like fully charged. All right, please prepare the source console as well as the target console to which the user will be transferred. Which console are you currently using? This is the source console because this has my data. So I, this is the source console and I'm transferring the user Hassan. All right, so it's gonna transfer my user information and save data. So we're gonna continue. Okay, continue the preparation on here. Source console has been found. Select transfer on the source console. So now go back to this one, we're going back and forth. Transfer, transferring user information and save data for Hassan. So now on the new system, it's got a, uh, a percentage bar right here. I have no idea how long this is gonna take. I have a bunch of games. So since this is just save data, the file shouldn't be too large, but still, it's a bunch of save data. So, uh, oh, it looks like, okay, it's taken about, let's say, 12, 13 minutes. It's kind of fluctuating a little bit, but it's, it's taken a little bit of time here, about 10 minutes or so. So uh, I'm gonna let this run through and then we'll come back and see what happens when it's done. All right, so we are continuing here and it now says finishing at 100%. So let's uh, check back in and see what happens when we're done transferring the user data. Oh, I heard a, uh, a sound. So on the source system, it says end. Your user information save data has been transferred. Um, okay, interesting. So all my games are still here, but I bet if I tried to play them now, what would happen? So let's say if I tried to do Super Mario Odyssey, because it was purchased under the American account. So if I go to here, checking if the software can be played. User cannot play the software, that's right. So it was playable under any account on the Switch because my main account purchased it. But since my main account is no longer on the Switch, I can no longer play these games, um, which makes sense. So on this side here, it's still finishing. Uh, I'm not sure what's taken the extra time here. Um, hopefully nothing gets lost in the, okay, okay, there we go, whew, end. Um, additional users can be added as well. Um, okay, cool, so actually, I'll, I'll skip this step. I know I can go to the settings and add everybody else, so I'll, I'll come back, I'm not gonna bore you all with all that. Um, Nintendo Online, okay, I already know, I already have it. Uh, configure parental controls. Do I want to set the? I, I like the activity log. I, I like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna configure parental controls. I know people are like I, I get comments on videos. Why do you have parental controls? You're such a kid. No, I, it literally there's no restrictions. But there's a parental controls app installed, and so what this allows me to do is it's kind of like an activity log. So okay, I have to go to the parental controls app, and I'll show you guys now while I'm here. Might as well. Um, might as well do this. So here's the Nintendo Switch parental controls app and the cool thing about it is yes There's the activity log on the switch itself, but this has got a little bit different information You can see for any user. So if I go to myself I can see the month of July the games that I've played the most and and it and right then so I can go backwards I can go to to June I can go to May tell me the games I played the most but also if I go into a specific day it'll tell me like if I go to um uh, let's see, do time, actually, let's see. How can I, oh, I know there's a way to, maybe it's under time played, there we go. So time played, I can scroll back through and see specifically, like Friday, this is what I played and these specific games. So it's just like the old activity log um, that they used to have on the systems. So I can kind of go back and see what I what I spent time playing, which is kind of cool. I, I like it, I think it's, I think it's pretty fun. So again, I have no restrictions, but um, okay, enter registration code. So let me go to the settings, add a Nintendo Switch console. Okay, next. Registration code right here. 193198, okay. 
and use your Nintendo Switch console for the next steps. Yes, I would like to register the app. Okay, continue setup on smart device. So um, let's do set parental controls. Actually, I mean, if I just, no limit, okay, no limits and no restrictions. Next, cool. So basically, again, um, it's set up exactly how I want, and uh, on switch number two, as it's calling it, which I guess I can rename, um, it'll track all my activity, which is which is pretty cool. Um, I, I think that's it's a fun fun little activity log in a way. Setup is now complete. Press the home button to open the home menu, and controller update is available. Okay, update now, yes. Every now and then with system updates, there are actually controller updates too, which, which gets missed by a lot of people. I have a bunch of Joy-Cons, so it becomes a pain to update them all, but it actually potentially will help things out. So it's always good to check the system settings and see if there's any controller updates. So if you go into the settings, you can actually see, um, go to the controller section and, and uh, see if there's any updates. But um, yeah, I mean, I think everything should be here now. So. Um, I'm going to do a quick little check of one or two things and show you that, that it's all here and we're, we're good to go. So um, once this is done updating, we'll, we'll just double check and verify. And then I would follow the same process going into the settings on both systems to transfer over the remaining users that I have as well. So update complete. Um, all right, insert a game card or download software from Nintendo eShop. Uh, but if I go into my account right here, uh, give me one second because I don't want it to show the friend code right now. Um, I'll scroll down. Okay, well, it does have all my playtime and stuff, just like before, right? It's got my friend list. Everything is all connected. Um, but what I can also do is I can go into the eShop now. And let's turn the volume on. Failed to load settings. eShop will restart. Oh, okay. I've never seen that before. Um, all right, so let's go into my account here and let's go into redownload. And there we go. All of my games are right here, ready to be redownloaded. So uh, let's just plop right into a uh, good old, uh, let's see what we got here. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Yep, there we go. And it actually says software and downloadable content, so we're good. So I'll click it, download started. And uh, there we go, it's downloading. So there you have it. So it's gonna be a bit of a process to re-download all your games, but once you do it, once you get all that setup done, you now have the new and improved Nintendo Switch. So if anybody's wondering, it is like if you are getting rid of your old Switch and getting the new Switch Lite, same process. However, if you're getting the Switch Lite as your second Switch, you don't have to go through this whole process, but you can just add the users on this Switch and download your games onto here. So you can add your user by logging in on multiple Switches and download the games. So that is possible. Um, the only thing is, one is your primary console, one is your secondary console, you can go back and forth. Your primary console, you can play all the games you want, any of the users on that system can play. Secondary console, the, the, the main user is the only one that can play and also has to be connected to the internet. So if I, download, if I logged into a Switch Lite, then, or if I logged into this Switch as a second Switch, um, this would have to be connected to the internet. But my primary switch, I can play as much as I want, internet, no internet. So that's the only restriction there, but it's similar to other systems. So um, I think that's pretty much it. There's not really much more to say. Again, it's the exact same thing. Uh, just they uh, updated the battery life, which is, which is great. So um, let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts are. Are you gonna upgrade? Is this worth the upgrade to you for the new switch? Are you gonna get the switch light? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and, and setup of the new version of the Switch. Thank you all so much for watching. Take care, and I will see you later.